Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Coffee House 252. I am Reverend Dr. Simon Muwawo presenting this program uh, tonight. Tonight we are looking at a very important uh, component in the life of a young person, alcohol addiction. I believe we are all at a time when we are making choices in life. And this particular topic helps us to understand how we can prevent um, being alcoholics and make important rational decisions for our future. To discuss this topic, I have with me uh, Shane Foote, who is a reformed alcoholic, and he's going to help us understand what alcohol addiction does to a person. Thank you, Reverend Simon, for asking me to do this. It's been a passion of mine now, being an, an alcoholic myself, to uh, try and reach out to young people, to, uh, to try and uh, tell them the dangers of what the alcohol can do with you. Uh, growing up uh, as a young boy at an early age, I think that uh, I became an alcoholic very early in life because I can remember from my childhood uh, white buckets behind the stove and blankets wrapped around them and quilts and uh, when I come to discover it was a strange smell coming from that and uh, when I got a little older I was told it was people used to make homemade beer and, uh, and back then when you were making homemade stuff and uh, beer they made it very strong. And, yeah. uh, it was something that parents did one time, you know, here, have a sip of beer and stuff like that, but that's very dangerous to do to your kids today, to ask them to drink any sort of an alcoholic beverage. It, it can affect me right away, I think, and uh, I, uh, I um, then it progressed to a certain certain level then over the years, in my younger years, as it got, instead of beer, it got stronger and stronger and stronger. Yes, yeah. yeah, so what does it mean really to be an alcoholic? What, what does that mean? It means that uh, when you get to a certain point in your life you need to have alcohol in your system 24-7. I was the type of person that I needed to drink. I drank on the job, I drank off the job, I drank and I drove, which is very, very dangerous to do at this day and age and I hope young people can see that now because education is taking them to a different level with addiction services. Alcohol was uh, my choice uh, of a drug and uh, now it seems to say today opiates and stronger drugs are on the market. So, but addictions basically are the same, and uh, it affects everybody big time, and uh, it needs to be addressed here uh, in, in this country of ours for sure. How did you become transformed? How did you reform from this alcohol? addiction and here you are telling us the story about the dentist. Yes, uh, back in the year 2000 I reached a certain point in my life. Uh, I was, uh, I had just gotten fired from my job for drinking and uh, I needed to make a change in my life when my health was deteriorating and uh, all because of drinking. My marriage uh, was broken up, uh, not 100% of alcohol abuse, but uh, it was a big part, factor in that. Uh, and uh, I um, decided that uh, I had to make a change. So uh, a good friend of mine used to come visit me and uh, I would kick him out of the house and uh, I would tell him I didn't want to see him, I'd swear at him and uh, tell him to go fly a kite and this sort of thing. And, uh, and he was, became very obsessed with getting me to join a program known as AA. And, uh, so when I was at home, he would come to my house, he would uh, leave pamphlets concerning a alcohol abuse and uh, he would put them in my bed, he, uh, he would put them in the fridge, he would leave them in the towel, all when I was not home. Mm -hmm. So one day I picked up these pamphlets and I read them and, and one thing the young people has to remember today, there is help. If you are an addictive person right now you need and you need help, it's out there. It's out there for them to reach out and get help. There's no shame. Nobody, uh, nobody will ridicule you for admitting that there's a problem in your life and uh, you can seek help and it's there for the young people. In, in the light of your story, I was searching the scriptures on what would really speak directly to us 
uh, regarding alcohol. And I found this one in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. And do not be drunk with alcohol in which um, you are laid into disbuchery, but rather be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Shane, you are a Christian, and how has your spiritual life, your Christian life, improved the quality of your life? It has improved immensely, uh, because with the program that I'm involved with now, there's a higher power in our STEP program, which we perceive as, as me personally, I perceive as God. And, yeah. uh, and uh, it has increased me. I, uh, I really became involved in stuff that I was always involved with as a child. Once my uh, drinking got, uh, once I became a reformed alcoholic and uh, a recovering alcoholic, I should say, and uh, I, I started to do things. My passion was in taking the talents that I knew as drinking as an alcoholic and then giving them away to the youth and back to the community through the church or through Christianity or whatever, right? Yeah, you are a board chair of the, the steward's board of <laughs> yes. the church. And how did all that happen? And I, I can see your contribution and your vision and also how you are passionate about supporting yes. these young people watching you tonight Absolutely. to improve and make better decisions. Yes, yeah. well, that all became possible when, uh, when my drinking stopped. And, uh, and I, I began to look at my life in a, in a Christian way and, and back into my passion uh, as to do that. You know, the young people today, they do not have to be ashamed. There is help for them and uh, it's there. All you need to do is ask. And me, while I work so good with the youth, I can take my mind and I can bring them right back to their level. Sure. And I can think like them. I can and see I can, I can, you know, I can see what's inside their heads there. Sure. Okay, so when you got sober, Shane, after many years of drinking, what happened to you? Oh boy. Well, it was back in uh, the year 2000. I was uh, staying with my brother in, uh, in Paradise, outside St. John's here. And uh, it was January 19th. And uh, about 9.15 at night, I had decided after I had stopped drinking, after 36 years of hard drinking, I had stopped cold turkey. That was a big mistake. About yeah. 9.30, I uh, went downstairs in his house to, uh, to go to sleep. And uh, but I wasn't there 15 minutes when I, I didn't know what it was then, but at the time it was an alcoholic seizure. And uh, I crawled upstairs to uh, speak to my brother to tell him I needed to go to the hospital. And he had taken a dog for a walk, he wasn't there. So uh, I, uh, I decided to go look for him. I was just about naked. I had a, just a house coat on. It was January 19th, snow everywhere. And I decided to walk, look for him. I didn't know what I was doing, where I was going. And I ended up in paradise at the Mary Brown store, about maybe a kilometer away from where he lived. Don't know how I got there. I w fell down. I was... Uh, full of blood mm. and uh, so the young girl was standing outside having a cigarette and, and she looked at me like she had two heads and I said where am I mm. and uh, she says uh, you're at the Mary Brown station in paradise I said do you have a phone or a pay phone I remembered my brother's number how I don't know and I called him and he was looking for me right so he came and got me he got me home got me in the shower and uh, then he made me go to bed upstairs I went to bed upstairs, I was there for about five minutes. I took another seizure. Mm. And at that time he came in, I had swallowed my tongue and uh, I was turning blue in the face and uh, he slapped me a couple of times to try to get me to respond and uh, I just took him up and I pitched him down over the stairs. I was, didn't know what I was doing, he broke his computer and uh, then he came back with a broom or something and he hit me. Bang! He brought me back to my senses. Eh? Mm. So uh, that was basically what had happened and uh, that showed me after I uh, watched shows of intervention that uh, quitting cold turkey was a big mistake when you were drinking for so long. Right. You needed to, uh, to go to the doctor or to hospitals and get help in coming off the booze. Right. Because it, it's, 
you definitely needed that because one out of eight people die. Right. right. But it wasn't me that night, thank God. Sure. Thank you. Uh, now, if you had the last message for the youth tonight, what would be that message? I would say to them, don't let peer pressure get you in anything. Look for advice from your parents uh, concerning alcohol abuse, drug abuse, whatever your addiction you think might be. It can happen. It can happen so high as uh, at early ages of five to six to seven years old and it will continue through your life. And there is a, a, an app on your phone, uh, which the Rock and Andy Man Police has out. It's a great app. It's every type of drug that the young person could be into, how it's made, the phone lines are there for them to get, just download it. It's an RCMP app, it's, it's a wonderful app. Thank you so much, okay. Shane, for <laughs> a wonderful time and for this discussion. And I know that uh, uh, the young people that are here have hate you mm -hmm. and um, it's up to them to make the right choices in life. And what is important is to also identify the value of Christ. Christ leads us into all these ways that are good. Uh, he invites us to become like him and to live a life just like him. So thank you folks for listening to uh, us and for watching tonight and I pray that uh, this will be a very good starting point for decision making in your life. Thank you.